Well, welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs and the Conscious Business Show. We're here today with Michael Lissack. A very interesting background. I think you're really going to enjoy the conversation with Michael as author, entrepreneur, philosopher, speaker, and founder of the Institute for the Study of Coherence and Emergence, otherwise known as ICE. But I think what's really interesting, too, and, and Michael's going to have a great conversation with us today on his many activities, um, he was named in Worth magazine as one of Wall Street's 25 smartest players in 1999, and also as one of the 100 Americans who have most influenced how we think about money. And this was back in 2001. And there has been no moss collecting on his shoes over the, the past few years. And so we're very excited. Michael, thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, such an interesting background, um, certainly on, on business ethics, and you're certainly your latest passion of empowering victims. Tell us a little bit about yourself, because you've got a great background, your journey to this point in your life and your career, and just share with us on, on how the roads that you've taken it and why. Well, thanks, Darby. So the story actually begins when I'm on Wall Street. And I'm one of the people that is running the public finance department at Smith Barney. And we were doing things that we shouldn't have been doing, <laughs> as was everybody else on the street. Yeah, okay. And I got to the point where I couldn't sleep at night mm. and did something that probably very few people have done, which is I decided to pick up the phone and I called the FBI. Oh, my. Okay. And for a year and a half, I was a friend from Florida. They did not know my name. They just knew they had somebody who was busy blowing the whistle on things. The joy of doing this is it allowed me to sleep. Mm -hmm. The consequences of doing this are it cost me my marriage. Oh, my goodness. It cost me my career. Mm. And unfortunately, even though I blew the whistle on 85 Wall Street firms and Uncle Sam ended up collecting over a billion dollars, Wall Street did not learn its lesson and has done the same mistake multiple times since. Right, right. But it set me on my quest to pursue ethics. So first I went off and got a degree from Henley in the, U in the UK, which is this lovely place where they do the crew regattas. Oh, nice. Okay. I'd so it's drop-dead gorgeous. <laughs> and started off doing serial entrepreneur things. So I was doing my academic ventures at ICE. Mm -hmm. uh, I was part of a company called WebMind that tried to build an artificial brain. Interesting. Okay. We then built something that is still the only search engine on the internet that allows you to enter up to 10,000 words at a time as a query. So that's called EpiSearch, E-P-I hyphen search. Okay. And it's probably the best academic research thing that's out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I also became a real estate agent because I moved to Florida. And when you move to Florida, if you are like everyone else who moves to Florida, you become <laughs> a real estate agent. Uh, yes. The difference is I have a strange mind. So I looked at what was going on with real estate in Florida, and I said, none of these people know how to operate the Internet. And I spent yep. a decade as probably the leading Internet broker in Florida. Really? And I had a company called Market to Buyers that helped real estate agents develop internet leads. Oh, that's fascinating. Okay. And we won the IT Florida Small Business of the Year Award in 2007. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, then came the Gulf oil spill, and that was the end of that business. Oh, goodness. Real estate agents no longer had any money to spend on anything. Yes, yes, yes. Changed the whole economy. However, my father passed. Mm, I moved so back weird. up to Boston in order to be around the corner from my mother. Yeah. And the Institute, which was doing all of its academic things, we focus on how does change happen in groups, mm. got intrigued by what was going on at Harvard. Harvard faculty have a habit of when they have an argument of doing it on the front page of the Boston Globe. <laughs> and the argument was about Title IX. And how do we go about making sure that sexual assault and sexual conduct happens the right way. Mm -hmm. And what we thought we read that Harvard was doing was trying to impose change on the students by fiat. Thou shalt do X. Mm -hmm. All of our research says that never works. Right, right. And we're all getting older. So we said, you know, 
instead of writing about it, maybe we should try doing something about it. Mm -hmm. And it is out of that that we arrived at empowering victims. 